Hi, I'm Lloyd Schonzel. I teach and research at Southampton University and this one is the second in a series of studies that we published in the IEEE Access Journal on Visible Light Communications Aided Video Streaming. So my hope is that you would find this interesting and visit our website for related literature as well as for other demos. The previous study was dedicated more to the upper layer design issues of visible light communications, whereas by contrast, this particular study is looking at some of the associated physical layer issues, in particular looking at the design problems of unequal error protection and uh, layered video compression and its transmission. So this simple scenario here indicates an indoor situation uh, where these so-called ATO cells illuminate the room, not only with visible light, but also with communication signals. So allow me to continue by focusing on the layered video coding philosophy to start with, which is harmonized with the recent design paradigm of heterogeneous networks. To elaborate a little further, so the video signal is captured by the camera at its full resolution as seen here at the left hand side, and then it's encoded, compressed into a number of hierarchical layers. The base layer is obviously the most important layer because without decoding the base layer, the enhancement layers cannot be decoded since they depend on the base layer. And of course, this has uh, numerous benefits, in particular, for example, in case of heterogeneous equipment. Uh, smartphones, for example, have a very small screen, and hence they don't require a high resolution video sequence, and they cannot afford a high bitrate either. By contrast, at the other end of the scale, a high resolution, high definition TV screen would require extremely high bit rates and also extremely high frame rates and uh, high video quality. The common coder intermediate format video would look rather grainy on a high definition TV screen. So this philosophy is very popular nowadays because networks can also afford dropping packets as they are traversing through the system as and when congestions occur. And so this has tremendous flexibility. It can also be exploited in the adaptive modulation and coding regimes of the existing systems, such as, for example, the fourth generation long-term evolution system. So let me focus on briefly uh, the color shift keying assisted transmission scheme. And color shift uh, keying could be thought of, could be interpreted as a relative of frequency shift keying because after all in visible light communications every wavelength uh, using optical terminology would correspond to a specific frequency in radio frequency terminology. So we could use three different so-called color bands, not necessarily the red, green, blue bands, uh, we rather have to use those particular bands where the LEDs have a high efficiency of transmission. At the receiver side, photodiodes have to be used in order to recover the signal. And in between the array of transmitters and receivers, uh, we can characterize the channel with the aid of a little MIMO matrix. Finally, demodulation can be as simple as uh, picturing it using uh, bandpass filters, basically, and detecting which of the notch filters has energy in it. Of course, uh, the fine details are described in the paper, uh, but to elaborate a little further on the color plane representation, so the three basic colors correspond to different wavelengths and uh, their different mixtures are represented along the edges here. Again, these correspond to specific frequencies spanning from the 400 terahertz region to the 700 terahertz region. 
And in this scenario, we can uh, see four points on the color plane. And that implies that we are using effectively two bits per symbol transmissions. But we can naturally put more points on this surface. And uh, what we are witnessing here is a 16 level color shift keying scheme. Uh, but it's also clear that the concentration points are much closer to each other. So therefore, we would need higher optical signal to noise ratios for detecting four rather than two bits per symbols. So let's take a, a little peek at the transmitter and receiver architecture. At the transmitter side, we use the H.264 encoder and uh, we used only two layers in this simple illustration for the sake of simplicity. So the base layer L0 is error correction coded and uh, transmitted uh, along with the enhancement layer. But as seen here, the base layer is also embedded with the end of a modulo 2 addition into the enhancement layer. And the objective of this is that in the undesirable situation that the enhancement layer has been received correctly but the base layer was corrupted or totally dropped by a router for example in the system then all the power assigned to the enhancement layer as well as the channel capacity assigned to the enhancement layer has been wasted and therefore every effort has to be made in order to recover uh, the base layer and so if we exchange iteratively exchange extrinsic information between the two layers at the receiver side with the this of this rather sophisticated information uh, path uh, that is described in intricate detail in the paper then the chances are that we can still recover the base layer as well of course the proof of the pudding is eating so let's look at the overall video quality first in form of a simple stationary uh, video demonstration scenario so in the upper layer we have the original picture at the left hand side and in the middle and this corresponds to the equal protection scenario namely the conventional transmission scenario Whereas at the right hand side, uh, we have the recovered picture in case of a sophisticated unequal protection aided uh, color shift keying uh, situation. Down at the bottom, uh, we again have three pictures and these pictures indicate the error between the transmitted and the recovered uh, video signal. So obviously in case of the original video, the error signal is zero. In case of the equal protection scenario, the error signal is the original frame itself uh, because the frame was dropped uh, due to transmission errors. And finally, at the right hand side, we can see that uh, there's a, a little bit of grainy as error uh, here and there, uh, visible in particular perhaps along the edges of the people in the picture. But Having stated what's visible in this stationary scenario, let's now look at the video clip. And uh, in particular, I would like to focus uh, on the bottom right corner where you would see in which way the arrow pattern evolves. So I wish you intellectual stimulation reading the paper.